The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. We the believers have been termed out as Alekane Ketesis, of this great royal family of God being baptized unto that great royal family by baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit, makes us to be eligible to witness to the Lord. The people of Israelites during the incarnation of our Lord were not eligible during that silent spirit from 450 BC till to the birth of our Christ on this world. Though many reformation movements they could get for themselves. Then and then existed the Old Testament exegetical college would have made them the people to realize that this was Messiah but they failed. And Lord knew very well that there was no light in them, though light should always excel the darkness. During the period of apostasy, darkness will excel the light. Today also, emotion activities are excelling the truth. Today also, rejection of Bible doctrine is excelling in the pulpits. That's why apostasy is rampant to the core, and we know that this world belongs to Satan. There are many false teachers who are trying to come around. But dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, our Lord during the period of Isaiah or Jeremiah or Hosea or Zaphniah or Haggai or the points which was telling right from Moses that man does not live by bread alone but by every word. Our Lord, he was telling faith trust in him because he is the one who is capable of doing all things because there is nothing which could be impossible in the hand of Christ. But the men went on to look upon their human viewpoint, their intellectual exercises, their thoughts. The thinking which they have nothing to be done with the thinking of Christ. The truth which they have nothing to be done with the word of Christ. But what ultimately happened, dear brethren? Failure upon failure was the result. And that's the reason our Lord told to them, they are not capable of witnessing to me because I know what is there in that man. But today in this Alekane Ketesus, new spiritual species unto Christ, we the church age believers have been called to be a witnessing unto the Lord and to be a great ambassadors for Christ. How and why? Why was the stratagem changed? Why was that from rational creatures we have been termed out to become spiritual creations in Christ? Because the only simple point is that you have been indwelled by the Trinity. Never before the church age and never afterward does God indwell every believer's body, dear brethren. At the moment of salvation, Lord God the Father, Lord God the Son, and Lord God the Holy Spirit take up precedence in the body of the church age believer. God's indwelling continues uninterrupted throughout the believer's life, and the scripture documents this unprecedented indwelling. The indwelling of Lord God the Father has been given in John 14.23, Ephesians 4.6, and 2 John 9. The indwelling of Lord God the Son has been given in John 14.20, John 17.22-23, John 17.26, Romans 8.10, 2 Corinthians 13.5, Galatians 2.20, Colossians 1.27, and 1 John 2.23-24. The indwelling of Lord God the Holy Spirit is exemplified in Romans 8.11, 1 Corinthians 3.16, 1 Corinthians 6.19-20, and 2 Corinthians 6.16, and the ministry being told in John 16.8-11. This indwelling, how can God indwell a believer's body may be a question. God is omnipresent, which involves both his immanence and his transcendence. And that's what we find in Deuteronomy 4.39, 1 Kings 8.27, Psalms 139, 7-8, Proverbs 15.3, and Isaiah 17.5. What does immanence mean? His entire essence is always present everywhere, so that the whole of God is in every place, as told in Jeremiah 23, 23-24, followed by Acts chapter 17, verses 27-28. And transcendence means, what does, is independent of the created universe, so that no particular place excludes 
exclusively contains him. And that's what we find in Psalms 113, 5 through 6. And Psalms 113, 3 tells the presence and license of the Lord, which the glory has been given as an order of worship for them. The same procedure should be done on this earth. And Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, none of his word would go void. And John 8, 23, both his immanence and transcendence exist in balance, so that the whole earth is full of his glory. He is holy in every point in the universe, while at the same time he is holy and lofty and exalted, infinitely beyond the universe, as told in Isaiah 6, 1 to 3, the great passage which a man has to renovate to the image of the Lord. And that renovation was being given for them in the endowment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit of the Old Testament time. But in the New Testament, we have been given greater work than Isaiah, greater work than Jeremiah. If God is everywhere, what is the meaning of his special indwelling of the church age believer's body might be your question. The combination of immanence and transcendence means that God is free to be local, to have a presence at a particular location as told in Exodus 19, 20, 24, 9 through 18, or Exodus 40, 34, followed by Leviticus 16, 2 and John 1, 14. And since he is not restricted to time and space, he can decide how he wants to dwell in this temporal and physical dimensions. He does not always have to be present in the same sense when he dwells within creation. Therefore, he dwells by his own choice and in a manner of his own choosing. And his sovereign decision in this matter is a striking expression of his love and his eternal purpose for this unique dispensation of the church age. Therefore, the indwelling of the church age believer's body is God's local presence in a more intimate relationship with the believer than has ever existed prior to this dispensation. And God's personal indwelling presence within the Christian's body is an astounding fact and the basis for blessing beyond imagination imagination only when we walk in the truth and in the spirit of Lord God the Holy Spirit. And dear brethren, these few words of exhortation of simple minutes, I want to get a notice to your mind, an earnest appeal of my heart. We are dealing with that great Lord who has given us the privilege now to be great witnesses for him. And he has given us the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, which is not purely our human energy, but the divine energy. And that bona fide gift of the pastor teacher could be made effective or could be used to the praise of his glory only when we are being faithfully prepared. The things which are needful for us to be temporarily sacrificed to the praise of his glory and his grace, because we are robbing which is due unto him, and we are not giving that which his heart really desires and deserves on our part. The true devotion to Christ should tell us that it is not our taste that is going to consult him, but it is his taste that we need to consult him. And his taste is in the truth, and his witnessing is also in his truth, and the truth is nothing but the mind of Christ, what we are having, which is Bible doctrine. So with the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, you need to communicate this truth. And the bona fide gift for each and every believer which has been given for ambassadorship and, and priesthood in the privacy of his soul, so that in the privacy of his priesthood, he can get back to the confession of his sin, to cite a case, and to serve back that great Lord, to be constantly indwelt by the Spirit. And this great Lord could be served only in truth and in spirit. And that's the privilege that has been given for us to be a great witnessing for him. And this grace testifying we can give only when we are in fellowship with Him. Not walking in darkness, but excelling in light. And Lord has called you are light of this world and salt of this earth. And we need to be that light and salt to this perishing people. Salt represents doctrine, light represents the truth. And we need to be an evidence, an example, that Lord was right in His wise decision to take us and to give us this Alakane Ketesis period. Because we, the church as believers, have been excelling in the witnessing power which he has given for us, and the witnessing truth which has called for us. And that witnessing truth has to be trained, which is a continuous process, and that training process has been done by diligently taking in the word of the Lord and constantly studying the Bible doctrine and giving them the truth, the truth and the truth alone. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Which way you want to witness to the Lord, you decide. Or which way you want to reject this tape, you decide. But remember, we the Alekene Ketesus of this church age, of this unique period, have been given this great privilege to witness that great Lord. And if you're not standing for that witnessing, what life is the life that you're living? And what life that is a life that should be left for you, as in comparison to the Old Testament, doesn't differentiate.
I am comparing and talking about the Old Testament, but not talking about the unbelievers of this world. Because unbelievers of this world, at this Alakenikitesis, the church is being started from the day of Pentecost, they have been more worsened, and they have been more refined to morality, and we the believers are not here to compare to that morality, but to look upon that virtue which could be derived from the knowledge of Bible doctrine alone, and that to under the mental ministry of light get the Holy Spirit. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Tomorrow we shall continue our discourse. But we need to be thankful to the Lord that he has given us to witness to him by the indwelling trinity, by Lord God the Father, as told in the references of John 14, 23, Lord God the Son, as told in John, reference 14, 20, and by Lord God the Holy Spirit, as told in 1 Corinthians 3 and 1 Corinthians 6. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. With our heart, board, and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father to believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth is quite very simple. Believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we shall be saved. For the pastors, it is very great. Preach the word, carry the tongue, log, and herald the word in season or out of season, so that Bible doctrine can be number one priority. And whereas for the believers, it is very true for us to such the scriptures diligently to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that under the mental ministry of God God the Holy Spirit we are here to communicate the truth and that truth alone is enough for us to be a great witnessing for us purely under the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit so which way you want to go you decide tomorrow we shall continue our discourse Father we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship be with thee through thy word and not only fellowship Lord a great witnessing work that have given to us under the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and the indwelling trinity Lord God the Father we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit can, light, can enlighten us more in depth so that we could be an effective witnessing and effective testifying on our part that thy word alone shall reign forever and forever and we give back that glory which really belongs unto thee and we should be doing that works which your heart really deserves and desires. To this extent we pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit will enlighten us to realize that as you live in truth, as your eyes are upon the truth, even we also should reside our life in Bible doctrine and the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit alone can enable us to do that and can enlighten us or shed light to do it. To this extent, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask in Christ's name, Father. Amen.